Hey guys, Danny Johnson here, and uh, I decided to go back and look at that Raptor again, the ex-Border Patrol one from the other video. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put the link in the description. But uh, there are a few things about it that uh, I noticed, and I wanted to go back and get a better look at it. Uh, one being the front grill. You'll notice that it does not have the running lights in the grill. It has the side markers uh, on each side of the front uh, fascia, but it didn't have anything... Uh, you know in the in the grill so uh, I got them to come give me the keys this time and uh, open it all up and so uh, in the grill you can see it has the uh, you know nothing in there and it does have the little place in the front where you would put a camera and so under the hood I did find a harness that was taped up under there so I'm assuming that that's the harness that goes to it I also found a bunch of wires from the sirens and some of the other stuff that I'm sure it used to have uh, so that was kind of fun to see that as well uh, inside I also found this this was telling you a warning about uh, how the siren can uh, damage your ears and you need to wear hearing protection and all that but I was curious did it have all the Raptor switches and stuff still because it had that big metal box and uh, sure enough it had them here um, along with this huge metal box and these were just uh, cigarette lighter attachments I was wondering what they were if they were knobs or switches because the uh, pictures I had weren't that good and uh, so I decided to start it up and uh, see how she ran oh, got an exhaust on. and uh, it has what sounds like a Flowmaster on it, that or <laughs> a really bad exhaust leak. Sometimes you can't tell the difference. No, just joking. But uh, anyway, I, I was cycling through the different trip meters and, and everything and uh, just kind of seen it had like a 40%. Uh, it had 10 miles to the gallon is what it was getting, which is kind of interesting to see. You don't know how bad people are beating on it. But uh, I think uh, I eventually found that it had 40% oil life remaining and and I uh, looked under the hood and that I'll show you here in a minute too but uh, just kind of thumbing through all this and uh, yeah this is pretty much just uh, your basic Raptor like the bare minimum that you could get it did have the auxiliary switches which were really cool I wanted to make sure it had that um, but without the SVT logo and some other things and uh, so I was testing out these other modes too they did have a spot for them and, and uh, when I pushed them they did work for the hill descent and the off-road mode so that was kind of fun and uh, I wanted to check and see if it had the red stripe on the center of the top of the steering wheel and sure enough it looks like the spot for it was there they probably peeled it off or whatnot but uh, that definitely was there and uh, my attention was drawn back to this black box and on it it has an hour meter so that's what that is it's showing you how long the engine has run and uh, in hours and to compare it I looked at my Denali which has um, about 58,000 miles on it and so with 58,000 miles I have uh, just under 3,000 hours and about 1,200 idle hours so I'm not sure which one that one on the truck will do but anyway just as a comparison uh, you can see where the bar was rubbing the roof for the cage that would keep your you know captives uh, people you know away from you and uh, so I was just kind of looking here it has the automatic uh, window that was still working um, but only the driver of course could operate and um, we'll, we'll go into the back seat in a minute too but uh, I was checking out uh, the volume and the air conditioning and just wondering if you know how it worked all in general and everything seemed to be working okay but definitely uh, you know everything here was showing its age everything was a little bit scuffed up a little worn down you could tell it had been uh, down quite a few dirt roads and uh, so yeah I went on revved it up a little bit and it sounds okay I didn't want to completely <laughs> redline it there and other uh, thing but in the back I sat in the back and you could see the mounts where um, the old cage was that would keep you you know away from everybody but then there's no lock in the back and you cannot get out <laughs> it does lock you in like a cop car so i was curious to if that was uh, happening or not and i looked in the door jam there's no child uh, lock switch and the windows will not roll down either because uh, obviously they don't want you if you're you know being taken captive in the back to be able to get out so the windows won't work and the doors won't open and yeah you can see that rub mark so uh, I went ahead and turned on the headlights too to see if they were uh, working properly and uh, the running lights and everything uh, did come on um, so anyway um, like I said the bump the one on the side there worked but there's none in the grill 
and so I went around the back to see if the back ones were also lighting up and they were so uh, everything was looking good there uh, inside I wanted to see the condition of the seat because uh, the one in another video that I'd seen was torn up this one's actually pretty decent listen to this yeah, this thing, uh, <laughs> this thing is rattle city. Uh, I'll close the door here again for you. Listen to it. So yeah, I mean, she's definitely been over a few jumps, I'm sure. But uh, this is kind of the overall condition of it. But uh, anyway, it was uh, fun to look at a few things here. And uh, you know, as I flipped everything down, I thought, man, where did this dust come from? This is probably Texas dust you know, right on our border. So interesting story that it has to tell. Also, one other thing is the uh, rear view mirror. I was seeing if it had the backup camera in it, which it doesn't. Uh, this one obviously doesn't have navigation or anything in it or the big screen for the backup camera. And there were no um, backup sensors in the rear bumper. And I don't know if that's just part of the parking assist uh, deal. So maybe that's the reason why it doesn't have them at all. But uh, anyway, I was just having some fun kind of going through here and scrolling through everything and seeing, you know, the oil life is, you know, something in the 40% range here. So I decided to jump out and check it too. And, uh, you know, as a federal vehicle, I'm sure it had its maintenance schedule and everything. I don't know if this has been privately owned since, but the oil was, uh, you know, I mean, it wasn't too bad, but it was, it was okay. But uh, looking under the engine bay, you find all kinds of little electronic things and, you know, wiring harnesses that have been tapped into and old things with probably old sirens. It's just kind of fun to look around and see what uh, is going on here. Uh, which reminded me I needed to jump up on the roof and see if I could see where the light bar was. And uh, it wasn't too bad condition, but I did find this little contraption. This was the only thing that was left. And it looked like it had some kind of plug for the light bar or something along those lines. And the roof had a few, you know, scratch marks in it, but it wasn't too bad. And I did find some overspray on the rear bumper, like maybe they touched the paint up a little bit. Maybe that, even the recovery hooks a little bit, but really hard to say. Not a big deal. And I did look along the body lines, and I couldn't really see any, you know, old markings where they had peeled off decals and it was sun faded, but uh, maybe I'll have to look in the nighttime. Anyway, so that's kind of the stuff that I was noticing and paying attention to. And uh, once again, check out video one if you haven't seen it yet. I'll put the link to that in the description, as well as uh, my other Raptor videos talking about the differences between the years of the Gen 1 and, and stuff like that. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching.